This is part 2 of the series on seeing mysterious Naga lights in Thailand. Click on the link on the right hand side if you want to view that first. In this video, I will be covering the other sites other than the Naga Fireball Festival during my one week trip in Vientiane, Laos, and the northern part of Thailand, Nong Kai, Phan Phai Sai, and Udon Thani. My focus is on sites which I believe have paranormal and mystical significance. Some highlights of this video will be the part where I show you a temple where the crests of the Nagas are supposedly kept and about the phenomenon of Naga eye crystals which are being picked up along the Mekong River after the Naga Fireball Festival. I will be covering the attractions in order of sequence, though you can see that there are generally two themes, that dam, what Fo Chai and what Kam Chenod are linked to the legends of the Nagas, and that Wang and Sala Kew Ku are not. In Vientiane, the first site I went to see is that dam, also known as the Black Stupa. Dating back to the 16th century, locals believed that a seven-headed water serpent, Naga, lived here to protect the stupa, which was once covered in pure gold. During the Siamese Laotian War in the late 1820s, the gold was removed from the stupa and taken to Siam, now Thailand, leaving the legacy that is the black stupa today. Despite the loss of its luster, locals still believe the Naga resides there as the city's guardian. One of the things that motivated me to do all this traveling is that at some locations, I pick up energies from places which I then utilize in my healing work. In this location, I picked up and received energy from a Naga. The second location in Vientiane in which I received energy was from that Wang, also known as the Great Stupa. A national symbol of Laos and memorialized in Laos' official seal, that Wang is the most sacred monument in the country. Legend has it that part of Buddha's breast bone is buried here and it seems to be this energy that I received. From the outside, that Luang looks more like a fortress surrounded by high walls and it features two temples along with the impressive 45 meter tall stupa, the top of which is covered with gold leaf. After I cross over Laos Thailand borders and enter Nong Kai, I visited Wat Pho Chai. Wat Pho Chai is considered Nong Kai's holiest temple because of Luang Pha Sai, a large Lan Zang era Buddha image bedeviled with gold, bronze and precious stones sitting at the center of the temple. This image of the Buddha was originally Laotian in origin, and part of a set of three nearly identical statues, all named after local princesses. In the late 18th century, Thais attacked and pillaged Vientiane, and amongst the spoils were Luang Pa Phra Sai and the two other identical statues, called Phra Suk and Phra Serm. Amongst these three statues, Phra Suk sank to the bottom of the river and was never recovered. Phra Sai was placed in what Pho Chai, where it still remains today, and Phra Serm went to Wat Pratit Thamakan, a close distance away. In the 1800s, the Thai king Rama for requested that both statues be brought back to Bangkok. But Phra Sai statue seemed reluctant to leave Nong Kai. When the time came to transport the statue using a cart, the statue suddenly became so heavy that it was impossible to move the cart at all. Elephants were brought in for the job, but no matter how hard they pulled and pushed, the cart refused to move. Only when the Thai king decided after learning of the situation to allow the statue to remain at what Pho Chai did the cart suddenly became mobile again. It may be true that the statue has supernatural properties, but my eyes were drawn to other marvels in the temple. In one inconspicuous corner was a glass display. For unsuspecting temple goers, these are just normal display items, but I have traveled to this temple to see what are supposed to be the crests of Nagas. Of course, there wasn't much news and information that I could find on it, and I don't think anyone has attempted to do any kind of DNA tests on it. It may have nothing to do with Nagas at all, but the fact that just on the off chance that it could have come from Nagas made me excited, nonetheless. If you enjoy the video so far, do give me a like. Whilst I was still staying at Nong Kai, I also visited Sala Kew Ku. This was built by a fascinating mystic called Luang Pu Bunlua Sulalat who was born in 1932 in the province of Nong Kai, Thailand. He would later relocate to Vientiane. He constructed a park at both sites, one at Nong Kai which becomes Sala Kew Ku, and the other one at Vientiane that becomes Buddha Park. 
The reason why I chose to go to Sala Keuku instead of Buddha Park is that all online reviews seem to indicate that the former is more impressive than the latter. The story of how Sulalat got the inspiration to create over 200 sculptures over 40 years of his life goes like this. At one point, Sulalat was said to have traveled extensively throughout India. Whilst in India and taking a walk one day, he suddenly fell into a cave. One version of the story stated that he met his guru there. This guru, known as Kiyaku, took him in as his disciple. Sulalat spent some years in this cave, studying a philosophy that blends both Buddhist and Hindu ideas, many of which inspire his artwork at Sala Keuku. Sulalat would start an organization when he came back from India and gathered devotees who were with him until his passing in 1996. Without any prior experience, Sulalat and his followers started producing sculptures depicting scenes and figures from Buddhist and Hindu mythology, and eventually produced the more than 200 sculptures. These sculptures were made from concrete and metal. The tallest one, a Buddha seated on a Naga with a seven-headed hood reaches a height of 25 m. Another noteworthy sculpture is the Wheel of Life, which you enter through a giant mouth. In the main shrine building, Sulalat's corpse is still lying in display in a glass coffin. That night, I traveled to Phan Phaisai in anticipation of the Naga Fireball Festival. Amongst the shops at Phan Phaisai, I saw what is known as the Nagai crystals, which are being sold as part of the festival. Again, there wasn't much information about these crystals I could find online. All the information on the Naga crests and crystals came from an obscure website, the link for which I have included in the description box below. But basically, the theory is that authentic Nagai crystals look different from any other crystals and are considered power objects. These Naga Eye crystals were obtained from around the Mekong Bank after the Naga Fireballs Festival ended, making the case that there is some kind of connection between these crystals and the Naga Fireballs. On the final day before I travel back from Nong Kai back to Vientiane and from there back to Singapore, I heard about a place called Wat Kam Chenod, located at Udon Thani. It wasn't initially in my plan to go, but I felt an intuition that I had to visit it after hearing its story. You see, Wat Kam Chenod is located at a lake where a mythical large snake, the Naga Lord Sisotho is supposed to be living. The legend states that Fra Ananda, a disciple of Buddha, visited the region near Wat Kam Chenod and encountered Sisotho, a native Naga. The Naga became a devout devotee of Buddhism after being moved by Fra Ananda's teachings. The Naga then swore to guard the region and everyone who visited Wat Kam Chenod for prayer. Another motivation to go is that there is a claim that around the Wat, there are Chano trees which apparently can only be found in this place and nowhere else in the world. Though that last bit of information could have been an exaggeration on the part of the temple and the locals there. The trees may just be a variety of Terminalia Katapa, which is found in other parts of Thailand and Southeast Asia. If you are a biologist, please go there and verify which of these theories is true. When I was there, I was happy to pick up another transmission from the Naga there. Unfortunately, I may be the only one trying to absorb any energy there. Everyone else seemed to be gathering around a tree, and I discovered they wanted to see a lottery number from the bark of the tree. I tried to discern a pattern from the bark too but no luck there. Overall, my trip to Vientiane, Nong Kai, Phan Phai Sai and Udon Thani was a fascinating and mystical experience. The legends and stories surrounding the Nagas, as well as the temples and monuments dedicated to them, added a unique and intriguing dimension to my travels. If you would like to visit any of these places, you can find travel information in the description too. If you find that this video is interesting, you may like this next video here.